This is Chairman Mike McCoo of the Willington Board of Finance calling the regular meeting the 20th, 2021 to order at 7.05 p.m. Um, on our agenda next would be seating of alternates if needed. I believe we have all regular members of the board present and accounted for. Uh, next would be approval of minutes. We have the minutes of the April 15th meeting, which were sent to us. Uh, those are the minutes that were taken by Eileen Smith. <clears throat> I have no additions or corrections myself. So I'll entertain a motion uh, to get the discussion started to approve those minutes. Move to approve. Second. second. Thank you, Steph, for the second. Any discussion, additions, or corrections? We didn't approve these before. No, there hasn't been oh, a meeting. We didn't have a quorum, right? We didn't. We, we haven't had, had a meeting. meeting. Okay. The we... budget season wrecks our way of looking at things. Sorry. All of a sudden, we go a month, and it seems like it was a year. Kind of nice, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, Marissa, can you call the vote? Jeff. Yes. Christina. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Pete. Yes. Matt. Abstain. Mike. Yes. Five yes, one abstain. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, also note we do have three meetings outstanding um marissa and i went over all of the old minutes today earlier today and we do still have to address march 23rd and the two meetings on april 6th uh, those will be forthcoming with the shifting between the secretaries and uh, marissa's schedule we left those behind by accident so um we will get those we'll get those addressed and get them to the board Moving on to present to speak, public participation is desired and encouraged. Speakers will be limited to time and appropriateness of comments to maintain progress, stay on topic and maintain decorum. So as we traditionally do, if any of you uh, would like to speak and you are in video, we'll start with you first. So wave your hand and we'll call on you. Stuart Cobb. Um, I don't know if this is approved or not, but one thing to add to the agenda, if possible, is a CIP uh, request for funding for the oil tank replacement at Station 13. Can that be added to the agenda? Uh, I think because it's a regular meeting, we can do that. So um, let me just make a note and we'll address it once we're in regular business. Okay, thank you. Uh, CIP re oil tank at Willington Fire Department 1? That's correct. Okay. Duly noted. Uh, other present to speak in video, wave your hand. Okay, those of you who are not sending us a video and are in audio mode where we just see a tile with your name, if you would like to unmute and speak, please call out your name, we'll recognize one by one. Okay, moving on to old business. Item one, public health crisis update, 1A revenue report. I put this in the crisis update because this is where we've been talking about how our budget has been affected by the pandemic. So it seems like revenue report would be fine there. Um, I did forward you the revenue report uh, a week or two ago. Um, any uh, discussion or review on that? Um, I'm just looking at it again on my screen right now to refresh. Can we share that? Uh, well, I have to get it to the other computer, but if you give me a minute, I will gladly share that. Now you're taxing my skills. Hang on.
Are you all seeing it? Did my screen share work? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're good. Okay, thank you. Let's see if I can make it. I don't know how to get rid of that little thing over there, but okay. Um, Mike, if you hold down the control button and then scroll with your, oh, then never mind. I'm getting there. Getting there. Okay. Steph, is there anywhere in particular you would like um, me to stop or highlight? Nope. Okay. Um, I will point out as we um, have discussed before, because of the pandemic, we did budget the current fiscal year at 98% collection. We have um, hit the 99% collection rate, so we exceeded our careful budget, um, which is great news. Also, 99% puts us somewhere in our traditional area, which is a good sign for, um, hopefully a good sign for the health of our community. Why are judicial fees so far off? Nothing's been happening in the courts. Yeah. All uh, right. And on that, I, I, I just want to note that I got my uh, uh, jury duty notice for June. So that should be picking up soon. Things are starting the, to happen. The things that I'm noticing here are the 445% for building fees and permits. I, I assume that's the loves thing. That is correct. Yeah. It was about $143,000. And uh, permits, pistol, bingo, et cetera. We're, it's pistol, I, no bingo. <laughs> oh, just pistol, no bingo? A lot of pistol, a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of them have your name on them. <laughs> it slowed down a bit, but that was probably um, what kept uh, us the busiest through, through COVID for sure. I got a quick question. So we're at 98%, but we're at 98% for the, the top line, plus we're over 100% for a couple other lines. But I don't, I, I don't know what the total over expected is, or I, I, I not, I don't know which line to be looking at. Uh, would that if make you go it back up to the columns? You would see that those four lines on the bottom that add up to that 98% uh, relate to um, the first two columns are the uh, month to date and the year to date. The third column over is the total budgeted. So if you scroll back down, you would see um, that was budgeted for 17, 772, 519 in revenue. Yeah. And at this point, the received at the 10 month point, the received revenue was 17,331,737, um, which is the second column. So we have 110,972 left to receive to match budget. Oh. We're in month okay. five. What's that, Matt? We're, we're in month five and we only have $110,000 to go to each budget on revenue? No, we're in month 10 because this is a fiscal year, not calendar year. Oh, okay. we're, we're in month 11. <laughs> no, we're in month 11 now, but this <laughs> report was, yeah. Yeah. The report was month 10. Thank you. All right, anything else before I drop this off the screen? Okay. All right. Um, anything else on revenue report before I move on? Okay. 1B, latest directives from the governor and or federal government and how the remainder of the budget process may proceed. Um, first, Erica, if you could kind of let us know with the relieving restrictions, um, that are happening in the state, do any of those affect our current method of delivering meetings? Uh, no, so um, I, I went off camera when I first logged on because I was um, 
uh, making copies hot off the presses of today's executive order. So there are a series of executive orders that have been extended through June 30. Um, and I was informed yesterday at um, what will be the last regular municipal meeting with the governor's office. So that's a, a good sign. We've been meeting weekly um, for 15 months now. Um, and so there were um, a handful that specifically address municipal issues that will only be addressed uh, extended through June 30. They're not anticipated to go farther than that. The governor's office doesn't believe there's justification past that to extend these. And then municipalities should expect to either go back to normal way of providing meetings or through legislation, um, a um, hybrid change, whether we're allowed to do a hybrid or whether we're mandated to have hybrid meetings. But that there is a bill uh, on the floor now um, and there's a lot of amendments going back and forth. So they're working on that. So I anticipate there will be some sort of bill. I hope that the bill says we are allowed to have um, hybrid meetings, not that we're mandated to. Mandated would make things um, a little bit tricky um, to have a hybrid meeting. We certainly don't have the technology to have multiple meetings in the hybrid, um, in person and on Zoom in multiple rooms at the same time. Okay. So by July one, I, I see it's getting back to some sort of normal in person and we're preparing okay. for that so, here now. So basically what we interpret from that is stay exactly the way we're doing it. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you for that. You're welcome. Questions on that before I no? Okay. Um, Erica, I guess this is you also, um, the updates on the American Rescue Plan. I've done some reading through it and basically it seems like the federal has pushed out their basic information and it's really now about how the states and or counties, whatever the local distribution process is gonna be still has to be worked out or am I missing something? No, nope. so what happens is if you're an entitlement city, the money went directly to you. So there are a handful of those in the state of Connecticut. We are a non-entitlement um, city. So we will be getting a chunk of money from non-entitlement funds and then another chunk of money from the county distribution. Those will all be funneled through the state, but the state cannot hold them and they cannot put any additional restrictions other than what is in the ARP um, treasury interim rule. So they right. are merely the catalyst to get them to us and they had 30 days from when the state receives them. Right, but we are, but I would assume what I was understanding or trying to say is that the process of getting it from the state still has to be released. Yeah, so OPM, I, I would anticipate OPM will be sending us something. I do have a meeting next Friday with CCM where we're talking specifically about those funds. Um, OPM told us to be prepared that they would be sending forth information. We just haven't gotten anything as of yet. So once again, I feel like I'm saying to you, hold on, <laughs> be ready. Um, we're just kind of in a holding pattern to, um, to see how that will be handled. And if you read the, if any of you had the opportunity and took the time to read the 151 page report, um, there is information about reporting and how we have to do annual reporting. What we're not sure is if that reporting will go through OPM or if from our municipality will report straight to um, the feds. I would anticipate it will go through OPM. So that will be one of the other items that we look to. Okay. Um, I also, I was trying to skim through the 151 pages and not lose my mind. Um, if I'm understanding some of it, there was information that I was sort of trying to key into on money for infrastructure, because I think we saw, we were expecting to see money for COVID related, which we do see that. Um, but the infrastructure was where I thought there may be some opportunities that we weren't maybe anticipating. Uh, but it seems like the infrastructure is mostly geared towards technologies and things like broadband access and things like that. Um, which I'm not sure will mean a lot for Willington. Is that what you're thinking? Or? That's what I'm right. thinking, Mike. And it also, uh, water and sewer infrastructure, those are the three right. big that fell under infrastructure. Okay. Mike? Did you have a question? Yeah, Pete, go ahead. 
Yeah. Uh, in addition to the 145 page one, there's a, a eight page summary. Did you get that? I'm not sure exactly where it came from because it doesn't have any stamps on it, but it seems uh, to have a lot I, of the same language. I um, believe I did, and I think I either forwarded it or the link for it. Okay, I, 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 I read through that and boy, um. There's a lot of political language without a lot of substantive language. You're not in, in both both the eight pager and the hundred and whatever it is pager. So mm -hmm. I, I think you have to parse out some of the uh, some of the fat, mm -hmm. and and I think that's going to take us a little time here. Yes, I agree, Matt. So the eight pager is, is the summary from the Department of Treasury. It's a fact I, I, sheet. Yes. Um, I, I, lo I looked at it and I saw um, broadband coverage uh, for the broadband infrastructure. I think we can spend part of that money on our, our library, which needs uh, technology updating. Um, I saw the, that we can have direct payments from the town of Willington to residents of the town of Willington who have been impacted by COVID. We can have direct payments to Willington businesses that have been adversely impacted by COVID. Um, we can have, um, you know, it seems to me, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, I, I need to read further into it, but it looks like we have an 8% increase of cash that we can just, 8% of our budget that we can claim. They said 4.3% a year over two years, that's 8.6%. I, I need to read into it more, but it, that's what appears to me. Um, and it also it appears to, to cover ventilation on, on um, town buildings, schools, firehouses, um, um, you know, town hall, different, different things like that. Also sewer, I mean, I imagine that that would mean we, we don't have a sewer system, but we have, we have septic everywhere. I mean, town, all the town buildings, I think, have septic, right? To me, doesn't, doesn't that wouldn't that fall under under um, this this bill as well, where we can spend money on on sewer systems in, throughout town, the town, where needed, of course. So I will share with you that uh, CCM set up um, an an ARP advisory committee, where basically um, municipalities, especially smaller municipalities such as Willington, can um, work with this group to funnel projects to help understand whether or not we think they're covered. So I think that there is a lot we're gonna be able to do with this money. The idea is that it be, give some sort of economic relief, not just to the municipality um, and our infrastructure, but the town, our residents and our businesses as a whole. And um, that's why Mike, I sent you the email saying, look on broad look, I can't recommend taking things out of this budget, um, but there's gonna be a lot we can do to help people. Um, and so that I think comes in a longer term. Unfortunately, we pushed this process off hoping there might be a little bit more clarity. We were told um, one of the things that caught my ear was um, the language that said, this is not meant to be any more restrictive than the CRF funds. And while that may be true, it's not evident in just reading this clearly. Um, they have to be COVID impact related. Um, so even, you know, ventilation is, is something we can think about whether or not increasing, um, you know, some computer things that the library falls under broadband infrastructure. I'm not sure. I think that might be a stretch. The broadband in infrastructure is supposed to be a little bit more broad, um, but it's not to say that we can't, but I want us to take the time to make sure we're doing it. We are going to have to report on these dollars and want to make sure we're spending them in the most appropriate way. Pete. Yeah, under um, one of these items, it says in for, uh, uh, public health orders and commu public communications efforts. Uh, we do have a committee on public communications for, for emergencies. Uh, that may be someplace where, where some of these monies can, can be looked at. Also, uh, the cost to the town for the Zoom meetings. And uh, if we go to a hybrid system, we're going to need some, some hardware and some software infrastructure there that I think would fall under that. Uh, also, the even though it's 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 
it's not uh, sewer, it is uh, waste uh, water and storm water. I was wondering if we could start getting our MP4 uh, project done through this, that kind of thing. I think we have a lot of areas where we could look. And, and if I could suggest that we have each one of our departments take a look at, at the at least the four eight page uh, summary and, and perhaps give us some suggestions so we don't have to look through each of their budgets independently. That's just an idea. Yeah, I would think we're looking um, at some unique meetings this coming summer into fall to see as, as we're learning more and gathering this information. I think there'll be some opportunities for some working meetings, maybe some board of finance connected meetings where we can start pulling this all together. Um, to to uh, edit my comments earlier, what I was trying to say is I don't see a lot that will affect the budget that we're ready to approve. Um, and I, I said that more like I didn't see a lot we could use in Wellington, which was not how I meant it to sound. Um, so uh, do we still? I think, there, I think there are a couple of items that you highlighted, Pete, that that maybe could be adjusted in this budget. Um, we had our microwave project to move broadband from one of the fire departments to the town hall or from the school to the town hall or one of those things. Uh, is that one of those things we could look at on this broadband thing and see? The, I, what I don't know is if we have it in our budget now or I can't remember whether that's project completed, whether it's gonna make a difference on whether we can spend the money on that once we've already paid for it with tax money. I, I, I don't know how that works. That, that was my curiosity. Phil? Uh, so uh, we participate in E-Rate, which is another uh, federal uh, grant system piece. And, and we were talking about the broadband. And one of the things that there's actually separate funds uh, from what uh, the town's getting here. Uh, and one of the things that came up through my, our E-Rate conversation is there are some streets in Willington um, that providers have not been down um, and they haven't been down them with, uh, you know, to provide uh, the infrastructure because it's too costly for them. And what I've been told is that there are funds out there uh, to pursue that. So I know, happen to know some of those because of the families that we've worked with um, when we went uh, to remote instruction. Um, and so I've already started contacting some families to find out those, we need documentation saying from their provider saying, we're not coming down your road. Uh, and supposedly there's gonna be funds to support that. So I don't know if it'll support all of it or, but that might be an additional piece of what they're thinking about uh, as far as broadband infrastructure. Yeah, and Phil, that's on my list of things. So those that the school isn't able to cover, we are able uh, to use those things and we can use some of our funds. Um, for school items as well. Matt? But yeah, I think, um, uh, do, do, do we have a map of, of, in town of which, which roads don't have broadband? I don't, I don't know. I don't so. but, um, Phil's probably putting together that list um, of roads and we could easily mark a map, but it's probably very few, it's probably roads that we could guess based on either how remote they are, how few houses they have. Right, there's only one provider, that's Charter, right? Maybe we can just contact Charter and ask them for, for a map. I know of one road in particular, um, and it's Jurassic Road. It's been going on an ongoing battle. Pete, to your point, I don't believe um, there's a date on funds uh, items that can be used that have to be COVID related that were spent prior to this. So if there are projects um, set before that were not COVID related, I, we would not be able to use these funds. So there's gonna be a little bit of gray area there. Okay, the, that uh, also, I, but what Phil said, I think kind of illustrates what I was saying is that I was completely unaware that Phil was worried about broadband on streets that didn't have broadband because I hadn't thought of that. Uh, Maybe some of our other departments have ideas that, that you're also unaware of. Mike, can you shoot an email to each one of the people that, you know, we, the departments and, and, and see if they can uh, provide us with any insight into how they might fit into this plan? I'm, I'm sure the fire departments have plenty of ways of spending money on COVID related items. 
I believe the fire departments are already getting emails from grant writing type people out in the industry who are <laughs> who are um, shocked. This is my shocked this. face. Yeah, that's your shocked face. I know. Um, all right, let me. Uh, I mean, there are things in here, Peter, like uh, you know, premium pay for essential workers, including our EMS workers, up to a certain dollar amount. Yeah, um, I, I, I and, saw that. And, and, and so those uh, can be short term to... things. We don't want to push ourselves over a fiscal cliff with that. Right, right, exactly. So, Pete, what you are asking is to send a letter out to our budget submitting organizations. Is that what you're saying? The people who we usually. Correct, have... exactly, exactly. To see if they have anything that fits under this kind of uh, rubric. Are you okay? I don't even know if I use that word right. Are you okay if I coordinate that with the selectman's office since they're administering a lot of this? That would be uh, outstanding. And and, okay. the, and the board of education because the, the board of education should submit that as well. So right. So they're one of the budget submitting organizations. So we would reach out to them. Yeah, I, I will say, Mike. After the big meeting that I have next week, I, um, you will see an item at the selectman's. Um, level that we'll be putting together um, a, a committee um, regarding this particular um, grant so that we can have input from multiple sources. Because they, you know, we need, there are really, there are ways we can, there, there's a little bit of infrastructure here, but a lot of ways we can help our businesses um, and our residents. And we have to be smart about how we use it. We don't wanna give back any bit of what I believe is going to be $1.7 million. We still, um, I, you know, I won't believe exactly how much we're getting until uh, I get something a lot more official about it. I have a question. How, how, where did the $1.7 million come from? Who estimated that and where did we get that? That's, the Treasury. It's so a mathematical formula that has to do with, with a few different factors from things like um, poverty rate, population, uh, median income, all that stuff. Right, and I... I believe the county money um, was based on population. So you'll see, uh, you know, our county got a pot of money and then it's divvied up between the towns based on your population. So, and there are some towns who are getting very, very little. There are some towns that are getting zero dollars for school funds. Believe it or not, we are fortunate for sure. But we want to make sure we use this 1.7 in the best way because we don't want to have to give back a penny and really help our residents. Stephanie. Um, I'm just kind of wondering if, uh, e even though we can't go backwards on, on some of these projects, if uh, under infrastructure and things like, um, you know, worrying about water, um, I'm just kind of thinking about the, um, the, the scare with the fuel storage hack and if there's some crossover with communications for emergency and um, some security for huge things that could really impact a community in, in the same way that COVID did. So I just, I'm just, I'm kind of even thinking about um, Village Springs, um, you know, uh, the rivers, um, but you know, there's, there's, I'm sure there's other, you know, there's other things, there's plenty of examples if we, if we thought about it, I'm just wondering if there's opportunity there for infrastructure upgrades because, you know, we're pretty frail nationwide, it seems, on some of the security issues, so. Um, on, on that point, Erica, I, some, uh, there was a mention in this conversation about the technology to do hybrid meetings. As I understand it, that technology, you were, you had already identified other sources of COVID-related funding that you thought were probably gonna pay for all of that. Is that true? So um, what we have in place now paid for um, a COVID money paid for half, there is another portion to go, but that's just gonna get us infrastructure in one room, Mike. If the mandate that there's been discussion about the governor mandating hybrid meetings, if that happens, you, you and I both know there are multiple meetings that happen on the same day. If we have to offer in-person in, um, on Zoom it, for those, we we would have to spend some of these funds to outfit multiple rooms and you know okay. that, that's going to take some work so that is once we have that we'll you know ease into that um and see what that language is i'm really hoping he hears municipalities say please allow us to but don't mandate us to right. um and the okay. storage so of the, these meetings is 
Costa. So I think the key for tonight's meeting is, do we, is there any reason for us to go back into the budget that we have already shown the town in, in budget hearing and change anything? And it doesn't seem like there's much right now that we can change in the budget that we are close to sending to the taxpayers. Is that, am I correct? Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I think we should revisit the budget. Um, we're going to be getting something around $1.4 million over the next year, year and a half. Um, I can't, I would want to have us decrease our, our spending slightly. We had a 4.3% increase in a time of significant economic distress for the citizens of Wellington, um, which I disagreed with and voted against for the most part. And I think we should revisit the, 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 uh, the budget and take things out until we reach zero. Well, that is, uh, I have no appetite for that on the surface as you presented it. I have no appetite for that at all. We beat this up over months. What I am asking is, are there things that we have in that budget packet that can be paid for instead with this money? That's the question I'm asking. Um, if so, we revisit, certainly, and if we can reduce what we're bringing to the taxpayers because the money's coming from the feds that could pay for those things, then I think that's a great idea. I, myself, have no interest in revisiting the process that we have already completed in proper fashion. I, I do. I, I have a large um, interest in, in revisiting the process and revising um, the budget accordingly based on what we assume or what we think will be um, you know, money from the feds. And um, I think that the, the proper way to go about it is to wait um, and not move forward with the budget approval process until we have a clear hand or clear idea of what the impact of the, the, the um, um, I can't remember the name of it. ARP. Yeah, a a AED or whatever it is, is on, on, our, on our finances that we anticipate for the next year. Erica. So I will tell you one of the uses that cannot happen for this money is to um, uh, tax cuts. You cannot use this money to um, to, to do that, right? So I, I just, I wanna make sure that everybody is aware of that. But, um, I, and we also have to, as a town before June 30th, have had a, a town meeting and a budget referendum. So if there's still no understanding by that time, we find ourselves in, in a real problem. Um, and so I, Mike, I sent a letter to you, which I believe you forwarded to your board, that I mm -hmm. couldn't confidently take out the things that I believed um, we needed, which is why they were in the budget, and say we could use these funds um, for. And so that's my I think, I think it's a good idea. I think Mansfield is, is, is decided to wait and, and not move forward with their budget process until mid-June. And I think we should do the same thing. And no, and I'm, I don't, I don't anticipate, I don't think we should cut taxes at all. And that's not what I was, that I'm suggesting at all. And the other thing is, I think it's illegal. I don't think they're allowed to tell us what we can and cannot do with our tax structure. It's unconstitutional. Yeah, I think we're mixing up a lot of different things. I think we're cross crisscrossing some different topics here. You said in your first comment that you thought we should reduce the, that we were bringing a 4.3% increase and we should reduce it because we've got 1.4 million in federal money coming. Mm -hmm. Different questions. We've clarified in this conversation that one and the other, uh, they don't mix. This 1.4 million that's coming is, is not a reason to be reducing taxes because it's a, it can't be applied for that purpose. So mm -hmm. if you have a conversation about reducing the budget increase because you don't feel it's appropriate for the townspeople, then that's a separate conversation because we can't, we can't mix the two together. Now, what Mansfield's doing, I don't know the reason they're doing it. Maybe they feel like the millions or whatever they're getting can be applied to things right now that they were going to work in the budget, so they need time to readjust. I'm not sure. I really don't know. Well, we, yeah. we have two conversations here. What can we use this money for? And do we go back through our budget process and reduce it on the merits of it's too much of an increase? So, so let's so let's talk about that schedule. Um, I got to find that email. Eric, oh, here we go. Nope. 
I'm looking for the uh, what I sent you, Mike. Uh, I just found it. Um, so your suggestion was uh, the town meeting could be held June 1st and the referendum on June 8th. That um, how much time does that leave us for getting tax bills printed for July 1? So um, Janice, our tax collector is on the line so she can correct me if I'm wrong, but that puts us right down to the wire. So that's assuming tonight you were to move forward and those items that you left off on at our at your last meeting, you picked up on, added to this agenda and took action. Then the selectmen can call a town meeting. The town meeting can happen. Then a referendum can happen. Then this board would need to then meet and set the mill rate. And then there's work, once that's done, there's work from the assessor and the tax collector's office here. Um, we do not print our bills in house. So we have to have them done, get them back stuffed um, and mailed out by June 30th. So that timeline puts us pretty darn close to June 30th. Yeah. Uh, I believe Janice so and I talked about having them ready the 30th, 31st. June 8th is 30th. a Tuesday. Sorry. June 8th is a Tuesday. That is correct. Okay, so if we met on Thursday the 10th um, to do the mill rate set, um, that, does that still fit in that schedule or would we need to meet like the next day, the 9th? Um, or either even after the referendum after. or as soon as possible because there is, oh. a, there's a lot of work that has to be done on the assessor's end. Okay. Based on the mill rate. It would be, if we were to use the schedule, it would be prudent to meet later on the 8th after the referendum. Correct. Okay. And just to go back to comment you made before, Erica, you don't have confidence that we can apply things that are in this budget packet. I don't, Mike. I, I really wish that I, I did. You, you know, you said you had a chance to read it. It's mind boggling. Yes. Um, and it's broad for a reason. They want you to be able to use it on a variety of things. But what I don't want to do is have us spend it um, on, on on something that's not eligible and then we'd be responsible um, for returning those funds. Um, okay. And then that's a, that's a bigger problem. So I'd like us to be clear and I really wish it had been more clear. Mike, did you just say you want to meet on the 8th after the referendum? That's what we are talking about. What do you want to meet at like 10 o'clock at night? Eight o'clock. You gonna know it that quick? It would be oh. like 8.30. So what do we do if, there, if the people vote, vote the budget down in referendum? Then uh, we would um, have nothing to talk about. Well, at the, at the 8.30 that night meeting, we would have to set a date for another Board of Finance meeting to review the budget and, the, and review the no from taxpayers and decide what to do next. And then wouldn't we miss the tax, the tax bills in that case? No. We are still responsible to send a tax bill. It would have to go with the current mill rate, and then we'd have to do a supplemental bill to individuals if it increased later so can we, do that, can we do that in this situation where where we simply no we send the bills anyway no we have to have we the governor's order uh, allowed to delay the process but we have to hold a budget the town meeting and a budget referendum before june 30th and then we have to have tax bills sent by june 30th so um they allowed us to extend so that we could take a look at this detail. I think there was probably some hopes that information would come sooner than it did, but it, it didn't. Um, and so other towns have, you know, are, are moving forward as, as well. So we're not alone in this. And some aren't. Stephanie. I, I just want to point out that more comparable towns uh, than Mansfield is to us, like uh, uh, Tolland and uh, Coventry and uh, Summers have all passed their budgets pretty much within their original scheduling because I think they foresaw that this wouldn't be ironed out um, and uh, in time to really plug it into the budget figures um, wisely. Um, would you go over those dates again, just that you're projecting for the, uh, the vote? Town, and the town meeting. Town budget meeting would be June 1st, referendum June 8th. And then just for the sake of discussion, a meeting of the Board of Finance immediately following the referendum count, which would be approximately 8.30 uh, on the 8th, which would be the meeting to set the mill rate, which would then allow the assessors and the tax bill 
creation process to go on, sent to the printer, back for stuffing in time to be in the mail for June 30th. Thank you. Okay, how long does that normally take? The stuff, the printing and the stuffing and the mailing? I'll let Janice answer that. <laughs> It usually takes at least a week, if not a little longer, for the printing. The stuffing that can that depends. I mean, we you know we get on about nine thousand, ten thousand bills that we have to put into envelopes. Um, so it could take you know a couple of weeks turnaround time, getting them out in the mail. So it, it's it's going to be very very tight using these days. And that's if the town hall's uh, roof doesn't fall in on the server. That is true. Okay. So I'm going to move that we set the town budget meeting for June 1st and the town budget referendum for June 8th. A second. We need to set the times. You, you don't do any of that. You do neither of those things. You need to do the three things that I sent in your email. You need to um, make any adjustments if you're going to and approve a budget. And then the board of selectmen call a town meeting and choose the date. And then- We didn't, we didn't adopt that budget already at a previous meeting? No. No, we didn't. No, you waited no, to see right. if there were any adjustments that could be made. So you have to do those things in this meeting I, okay, I thought we had already done the adoption, which uh, would mean we'd only do the adoption now if we did budget adjustments, I'm sorry. Correct. So if you do no budget adjustments, then you can adopt it as it stood. Okay, I'm gonna rescind my motion. I move that we adopt the, that's not correct actually, this says 2021 budget. It should be the 21-22 budget, correct? Yes. Okay, I move that we adopt the 21-22, also known as fiscal year 22 budget, as previously presented to the taxpayers. Second. All right, discussion on that motion. I, yes. I, I, I believe I, I agree with Matt that I, I'm uncomfortable with that until we get the, some more direction on, on exactly what we can move in and out of this budget and, and the adjustments that may or may not be, need to be made based on, on this, uh, on, on the Recovery Act. I, I, I would like to see if we could give it a week. I, I think we still have time if we give it a week. Have a, have a meeting uh, even next Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that, so we can. Peter, you have a really weird, you know, uh, metal feedback, metallic sounding. So oh, I don't know. Sorry. If you, you, you didn't before though, so I don't know if there's a position of the mic or something. Uh, maybe I was leaning into it too far. I don't know. Yeah, you still have some sort of a metallic whistle, like you're getting ready to sing a rock song. In eighty, uh, eighty. No, that wouldn't be me. <laughs> That's all I have anyway, so I'll Thank mute you. and make the tone go away. Could we, comments on the motion? Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering if we could have um, uh, an updated, an, an update on what the um, fund balance has now from this fiscal year. It was trending quite a bit uh, under what the expectations were or over um, for this fiscal year. And I'm wondering what impact that has on uh, our sort of budget um, calculation. Yeah. I don't have our typical report for this meeting because Donna is on um, a day off and um, was not available. I, I, so I, can, don't. I can tell you that there's at least 143,000 more than we anticipated from that loves <laughs> permit going into the general fund, but I, we don't, I don't have those numbers without Don here. I wouldn't want to accurately speak to that. Phil, do you have any insight on that? None. Okay. Sorry. It just seemed like a, a month ago it was 
looking a lot more favorable than for for uh, tax year. Uh, I mean, uh, but budget year twenty one. So I know they're working on um, on those numbers downstairs, but I don't have anything for you to share, Steph. I know we might return some. I don't know that it will be that how significant it will be. We've been cautiously spending over the last year. Discussion on the motion. Marissa, would you call a vote, please? The motion is to adopt the budget for the fiscal year 22 as presented to, presented to taxpayers. Uh, Christina? Yes. Matt? No. Stephanie? Yes. Jeff? No. Pete? No. Mike? Yes. Three yes, three no. Motion fails. Okay. I can share with you that by next Tuesday or Wednesday, I will not have had any meetings and won't have any clarification for you. So I don't know where um, we think that will come. Uh, a budget from budget writers across the board was presented before we knew we had a dollar of federal funds. Um, so if we could have used them, we would. But. Erica, the, the process after tonight, <clears throat> we just made had passed, then you need to address it at the Monday Selectman's meeting. Is that, or, do, or is your yeah, Selectman's meeting this coming Monday? Well, only if there's a budget to adopt to send to town meeting. If you don't okay. adopt, a, a, if you don't um, approve a, a budget to go forth here, then uh, there's no annual town meeting call. That's going to have okay. to happen at some point. So I'm working the schedule backwards then from that June 1st date. Assuming it would be June 1st, how many days of warning do, does the Board of Selectmen need to act with? All right, so you, so you have to have five days of warning. So you would have to act at least six days before that date so you could get a warning out the next day. That's correct. You'd okay. have to meet, we'd have to have a meeting. Okay, I'm just trying to work it backwards from June 1st. So that's the 25th. The, 20th. the holiday, yes. Oh, that is a holiday? <laughs> There's no. a holiday on the 31st. What's with, that? With the holiday, yeah. Okay. Um, so the if we kept the June 1st schedule, the latest would be May 25th for the selectmen, the Board of Selectmen to act, which is um, Tuesday, next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. If we acted tonight, you were planning on acting next Monday. Correct, because the document, the, the information has to be prepared. It's not as though you have a meeting and it's you know, simple. We have to plug the numbers in and um, you know, there's some work to do on our part. Right. So we could call a board of finance meeting again for tomorrow night. So we could direct you, so we could give you, maybe adopt something no. to you on Monday. No, you cannot. You don't have 24 hours notice of a meeting. Excellent point. We can have one Saturday. Um, okay, uh, some discussion amongst board members on how to proceed. Pete, looked like you're about to say something or? I, I am. Are you still getting the feedback? Or not? not as bad, yeah, no. It's okay. great. Uh, I think that next, it, seeing as how tomorrow night's completely out of the question and I can't read all 145 pages by then anyhow, I, I really don't have as good a handle on the documentation that we've gotten even, much less on what the budget uh, options are. I, even, if, even if Erica can't give us anything other than what we've already gotten, I haven't absorbed that yet. Uh, so. I think sometime early next week, even if we could get it, uh, give us a chance to read this, absorb it, see where we need to go from there. Uh, and if you could 
write that email and see if we could get any feedback from any of our uh, uh, budget entities that might have an idea, even we, based on the I eight page uh, addendum. I suspect that we will not get any feedback from the budget submitting entities for quite a long period of time because they'll need that time to even start reading and digesting it. And then they're gonna reach out to Erica or to the finance department and ask them their opinions on it. I don't think we'll receive any information back. Not in this time frame, I mean. Yeah, I, 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 I understand your, your, your uh, reticence on that and your, and, but I'd, I'd really like to have at least until next Wednesday. Well, I don't, I'm not sure I see how we can complete the tax bill process in time for June 30th. As Erica said before, it's different if the taxpayers reject the budget, we can still send tax bills out with a note saying there'll be an adjustment in the future if needed but we can't send the tax bills out unless we do this process of having the meeting and the referendum. So basically you can have the meeting, the referendum, have the referendum fail, you've met your legal obligations, and then we can, if the taxpayers have failed the budget, then we can revise the budget. We can't skip or delay the meeting and referendum and then still get the tax bills on time out to meet our legal requirement. That I think is one of our conundrums here. And let's keep in mind, this is what we have spent the last six months working on. Do, do we have to um, um, review budgets from the submitting organizations or can the Board of Finance uh, make adjustments um, without input? I wouldn't want to do that, but but given with the situation we're in. Um, yeah, we can change just like we did through the process. We changed appropriations or, or allocation or whatever it's called. But we, we changed it and then made a motion to accept an adjustment. Right. We made an adjustment. We made a motion. We accepted it as we went through that sheet of motions of, of department over department. Right. And by the way, all of those were resolved and passed. So as far as what makes up the budget, we did, we did agree on those. We did, we did pass those. So now we're talking about going back and reopening discussion on um, appropriations that were legitimately made. So right. Right. Um, that's one concern I have. The other one is I'm not sure I understand what Pete is saying. I mean, I think you're saying Let's let's get some time for more study of the American Rescue Money and the and the rules that follow it, and and ask the reporting uh, budget writers to um, to address that. It's still not it, it it's I don't I don't see how that would have a big impact on the on the budget. I don't think there are too many things that are already in our planning that would be affected by that. From what our discussion's been sounding like today maybe i'm oversimplifying it stephanie if, if i could adjust uh, address what you, you sure you better, please uh, do about how i i approach that the reason i approach it that way and 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 try to figure out what the plan says first was uh this board was badly burnt by the governor a couple of years ago on the school uh teacher mm -hmm. retirement mandate when they told us one thing we uh believed them i we tried to, I tried to move it to a different line. I was assured that the, the governor was going to not hold us responsible. We passed it the way the board wanted to pass it. And, and indeed we got burnt because we didn't follow up and find out what the, the, the serious ramifications of our decision were. And, and I, I don't want to get burned like that again. I, I burned, you know, burned me once I, I, I try to learn from that. So that, that's the only reason I, I'd like to get a handle on on what's going on here prior to prior to my making a decision. Well, in, in a perfect world, I, I would agree with that. It's, it doesn't feel real perfect to me right now. It didn't feel real perfect back then when we were looking at teacher <laughs> retirement either. It, it, it was a, a rush job. We were asked to make decisions very quickly at the very end of the budget process. 
And and once again, that's that's how we get burnt is when we we don't take that extra second to breathe and, and make sure we have our our information in a row. That's that's my only that that's my trepidation there. So um, I just want to comment on process. Um, Stephanie made a comment about the fact that we have already made um, for each of these departments. Robert's Rules recognizes um, that typically it is not it is intended that you don't revisit actions you've taken. If you've committed an action, uh, you don't typically revisit. However, Robert's Rules also understands there are times when there are compelling reasons to revisit. Um, so an action typically is expected to hold. Otherwise, every time you had, say, a change of board members or um, the change the wind was blowing, people could say halfway through a year, you could go back and change a plan. This isn't just for budget reasons. This is Robert's Rules in general. So what Robert's Rules does say is um, typically reopening an action is um, with compelling reasons. Um, such as uh, we, the reason we're here tonight is a compelling reason because there was this opportunity for federal money. Um, so reopening the budget in light of that um, certainly fits with what Robert's rule seems to have for intent, why you would reopen an action you've already taken. Um, not, not liking the budget that we're sending to the taxpayers because it has an increase is just rehashing what we've already been through. So no, no, it's not. No, there's there's been a change now. A new change. Can I, Mike? Can I comment on what Peter was saying? I hear what you're saying in regards to the teacher retirement fund. That was something extra that was added. Nothing. We're not asking. Budget writers aren't asking you to add anything. We're saying that we, before we knew there were federal dollars, put items in our budget, not necessarily because they were COVID related, but because we believe they were necessary. And I had said to you, I thought there might be some things that we could potentially with these funds um, make cause that for COVID reasons, we can take them out. And I can't confidently say that it's not as though um, that it's something being added to the budget or that we're being you know, kind of suckered into something ex extra. If there were no federal funds, the budget that we put forth, we'd still be adding these things. Um, and I'll give you some examples. I thought potentially the Microsoft Office project might potentially be something we could um, put towards COVID. I'm not confident that's the case. Or monies for the pickleball court because it would add um, something for outside. Don't know that that's the case. The fire panels at the school don't know that we can make a case for COVID. So there were a handful of things. There's not many things in this operating budget um, that really scream they're here because of COVID um, or that they're, you know, we boosted things because of COVID. And that's why I said I couldn't confidently suggest you take something out um, of this budget. Erica, that's exactly what I was, I was trying to find out. However, that's why I wanted Mike to write a letter to some of these, these departments to go through their own budget to tell us what's in it. Because while I, I absolutely agree with you, uh, pickleball, Microsoft, and uh, fire panels aren't 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 going to do it for COVID. They, I, that's that's too far a reach. However, I I Why don't not? know if fire engines and, and and things at the fire or whatever is at the fire department. That I am not confident enough in my grasp of the entire fire budget to know if there's items in there uh, that that may or may not be COVID relief. That that's my point, exactly what you, you just said, is that we, we don't have that information. You don't, but you also didn't have anybody come to you and said, I added this increase in my budget because of COVID. Those would be the things that would stick out to us. Nobody came to you and said that we didn't add. The Microsoft Office project was there because we need to do it. Now, if I thought I could make a case under these rules, I would have recommended that. If I could recommend taking dollars out of this budget and using these for them, that I would have been the first one to send you a, a list and a suggestion, absolutely. But you're not gonna get guidance in the next week or two if you know, suddenly you or one of our budget writers knows more than um, 
all of the mines in the municipalities in Connecticut who are shaking their heads at the same time. Our biggest cities aren't cutting their budgets based on these fundings because we cannot. It's just not realistic. I wish that we could have taken a couple of things out and not pass those dollars along, but it, it just, it, it's risky. And um, then we risk not getting those things because I won't put my name on something um, and use those funds for it if it's not um, uh, an actual use of those funds. Okay, I'd like to refocus. Matt was making a comment before. Um, <laughs> Matt, you were responding to me saying that what I said is not what your your angle was. So, so please clarify. Well, there, there has been a big change. We're, we're going to get an influx of, of federal money, some of which will, will impact the, the monies that we budgeted for this year. You know, okay, except, except you're making a general statement about something that we keep saying we can't find information for. So we're going to get an influx of money, but we have not yet found a way to apply it to this budget. So if you feel you have a way to apply it, let's talk about it. Okay. How do you feel we can apply it to this budget? That's what we're struggling with, right? I guess I'll have to read, read the, the 137 pages plus the eight pages, look at the budget and, and come up with ideas. Um, I, I, uh, we've, how long have we known? I, uh, I guess that's, that's the only thing I can come up with, sorry. Jeff, I think you can make whatever the hell you want a COVID expense and just make it up. I hate to say that, but you know, I appreciate everyone's honesty, but it's all funny money anyway. Well, Jeff, your name isn't uh, the one responsible for it. So I think our business manager and I would completely disagree with that. Um, and I would not recommend just making it up and assuming that that's the cause. Then uh, that's how we find ourselves in a heap of trouble. There's been plenty of worse sins. <laughs> that's a classic two wrongs make it right. I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, we're. What are, you gonna, what are we gonna do with it anyway? We're, we're all gonna be uh, taking our wheelbarrows full of cash to buy bread next year, so. <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's plan B for this? Whatever it actually is, 1.7 million over two years? Is that what it actually is? Yeah, it's 1.7 million. Yeah. Okay. It's three years, right? It can well, be, three years. it has to be, allo it has to be uh, encumbered by December 31st, 2024, and it can be spent longer than that. Okay. And it's meant to be economic relief. It's not meant to be cut the Willington taxpayer dollars. That's what it's not meant to be. And if there were things, Matt, in this budget that were COVID, direct COVID related, you'd be hearing me scream from the rooftops. Let's use these dollars. Let's not pass them along. Okay. Mike? Yes. Oh, I was just thinking that when we, if, if, you know, when we went, when we did all the, you know, the budget motions, you know, I actually felt like there was a darker overlay than there is now. And, and we, yes. we struggled with that budget a lot and we, and we passed things after a lot of deliberation and after hearing a lot of people. And I, that's the part that I don't think has changed enough to qualify for revisiting the, mm -hmm. The, the contents of this budget, because we've we've already looked at them in terms of what what might fall under the American Rescue Money, and we just don't have enough to say um, to say that there is an impact there. So I feel like where we were, where our heads were, and where our votes were when we were doing the motions, is in in my opinion solid and um, maybe even. Uh, I mean, I, I think that there's more recovery and more likelihood of um, of a brighter year ahead. That's just my opinion. I would agree with that sentiment. And I guess what I'm hoping is that as we move into this coming budget year, we'll be seeing the guidance getting clarified. The state will have clarified the application process. Um, and we'll be narrowing down what things are applicable. And then what it may introduce is opportunities to create new projects or expenses or, or um, com complete certain things or do new things that we can, that's productive for the taxpayer or productive for a local business or productive for other people who need relief 
in which case then the benefit would not necessarily have been in this budget that we're pass. It would be in new things and might be a benefit in the next year because we might have been able to do certain things that might have been like, let's say, capital looking ahead in capital where we had uh, ventilation projects out ahead in capital or something to that effect. Maybe we can apply those in this coming year. They were not yet budgeted because they were in out years in capital planning. And now we've relieved what would have been a future expense. So I think that may be where some of our opportunities are to impact the taxpayers. I just don't see, I don't see enough information that we're going to help the taxpayers right now. And in all likelihood, if we don't keep the process moving, we're going to make it difficult. We're not going to gain any new information, but we're going to make it even more difficult for our administrative process to succeed by June 30th. Fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to say that I, I, I absolutely agree with Stephanie and you on this. However, Erica made me think of two things that, that uh, I think are COVID related and economics related. Our economic advisory board, our, our business people, that, that is someplace where we should be looking at their budget and seeing if we can apply some of this money there. Even if it's adding some of this money into their their budget and and um, the um, human uh, I want to say human resources that's not right the uh, services. family services family services both those budgets were impacted by COVID and I believe that we added money to their budget because they were added uh, uh, affected by COVID and I think those are two two places that I can come up right off hand where those would be COVID related dollars and and. I, I, I don't know, maybe Erica disagrees that, 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 you know, the, what was brought on, uh, the economic pressures brought on by some, to some of the families in our town and, and to our, our businesses aren't, weren't COVID related, but I, I, I think probably they are. Those are two of the areas that I can think of right offhand, even without reading all, all 145 pages and going back through the entire budget that we approved. Peter, I totally agree that human services is directly impacted 100%. Some of the programs that we might look at setting up with these funds will directly impact them. Um, but that the budget for the, that particular department, if you go back and revisit it, the budget, the transfer that the town that the town gives for those covers the administrative costs in that department. Everything else is, um, you know, kind of revenue and. Uh, generated. So there are a handful of things in there. If you take those all out of our normal operating budget this year, then you're going to find yourself in a cliff later. When do you put them back? Um, so I think there, there are definitely programs within that department that we will boost up. We will look at food insecure programs, making sure that with some of those funds, our food pantry is stocked, helping with families, direct payments to residents is something you can do. Direct payments to small businesses is something we can do. I just don't see those in our operating budget. Yeah, I think that's an opportunity this coming year during during the fiscal year to see where we can apply it. Christina? <clears throat> I was just gonna ask about what the, what the process will be going forward. So let's, let's say the fire department or family services or, or the rec department comes up with it with something that they'd like to use this money for. Will they come to the board of finance, or will they go to the board of selectmen, or um, just what what happens? And <laughs> what they what drive the into process? Hartford. They drive into Hartford with a sack, and someone will scoop coins in. Yeah. <laughs> They might as well. That's why I want. That's why I want to set up a, a. What we need is another committee in this town, yeah. right? But I think it's important that those things kind of be sussed out there because it will be at the board of, uh, you know, selectman level that this gets funded for the most part. Um, but again, I want to make sure we have some clarity on all of that. Um, and you know, I couldn't even spend a dollar of it today. We don't even have these dollars, so it gets difficult. But I think those are all questions that still have to be answered. There's so many questions about these dollars and it's a lot of money and it's meant to be used for some economic relief over the long haul right so for several years we could put it into play longer it just has to be committed um, by December 31st 2024. 
more discussion? Maybe is, is there, uh, you know, the other the other thing I'm kind of thinking about is this idea that we have time because even if we're willing to meet on a Saturday, um, and and that is, uh, is there wiggle room in this? Because what I was hearing from Janice and Eric and various people is that there is not. Um, so I'm I'm just I'm not I'm feeling uncomfortable with pushing this off. Um, I feel like there's a day or two wiggle room and that's it. Again, that's why we, even us waiting until Monday to meet might take up those two days of wiggle room that remains. And then if we do do that, there's going to be an added expense because supplemental tax bills will have to go out and you know, all, all of that, which is probably a couple thousand dollars. Um, no, that's only if it fails. <laughs> well, no, if we can't get the bills out in time, they would have to send bills based on the existing, right? Right. So if you change the mill rate, then yes, a supplement, like Christina is correct, a supplemental bill will have to go out that will generate a new set of bills. Um, and I'm sure our, our taxpayers will love to see uh, see that for sure. Um, but yeah, well, wait, 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 wait. So what happens if you, if you don't have a referendum? Tax, the referendum and tax bills go up on the 30th. What happens? We have to have a referendum. I know that. We are, we are obligated to hold one. And tax okay. bills have to go out by June 30th. So if, a, if a new mill, if we don't have the time to do that, we have to send a bill based on the current mill rate. Okay. And then you have to send a supplemental and there is additional cost involved in that. Well, no one's saying that, we're, that we have to, that we're gonna change the mill rate. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm saying where I, I can't assume what the mill rate will be. You set that mill rate. We know what it is right now. If we don't have a mill rate in time to send bills, we are obligated to send bills to a tax bill and it, it will use the current mill rate until one has been determined. So let's say we've gone through the normal process, Matt, and the budget had failed at the May referendum like it was supposed to be and a new one didn't pass till after July 1, we would have to send a tax bill with the current mill rate and then you'd have to send a supplemental later. If, with you, the, if you decide to change the mill rate. If there is a new mill rate, that is correct. But if it stays the same, then you don't have to. Right. So that would make the assumption that our current mill rate that's in the current fiscal year right now, um, which was the uh, slight reduction of the previous year, that would be assuming that that rate would be the end result of this revised budget process. Whether that's revised because it failed at referendum or revised because we bring a new budget to the taxpayers that, that passes at referendum, either way, it would eventually have to get passed and the only way they wouldn't get a supplemental bill is if the whatever got passed was the same mill rate as the year we are in right now that we passed last year. Mike? Yes. Can you remind me how much we changed the mill rate based on the, the current budget as we discussed from last year's mill rate? I, I can tell you did, that, Mike, if you need that. So we the, we the haven't current... said it. I, I know we haven't said it, right. but we, we discussed it at, at some length at one point. I can't remember whether we went up or down or stayed the same or. Yeah, I don't have that one in front slightly, of me. Uh, it, did, it would slightly, it, 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 uh, it, right now it's 29.99. The uh, proposed and estimated, um, and again, you haven't said it, so it's only estimated is 30.89. So it's a uh, 0.9 change. All right, 0.9 mil increase. Correct. All right. And that's assuming, that's assuming that we decide not to spend reserve and we decide to tax. No, no. I believe that was, the, we, we did have some reserve being spent in that. That includes what you put yes. in that from the- That was, balance. yeah, that was all- 400,000. That was all baked into the cake already. Mm -hmm. Right. So we could, we could if we wanted to, increase the, 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 the funding from reserve and, and send a bill for the same amount and adopt the same no rate. Right, but we knocked the yeah. we knocked the reserve down to ten and a quarter, I think, which was right in the middle of our eight to twelve. I think that's where we left it. Yeah, 
we have a meeting on Monday and, and then table this into, until we can meet on Monday and discuss possible alterations. We're not going to know anything new on Monday. Why are we waiting till Monday? I don't understand the value of that. Because we appear to be at an impasse. We have three people who want to pass the budget as is and three people who don't. Well, I'm going to take another shot at it. I move that we pass the budget as presented to the taxpayers for fiscal 22. Second. Discussion on the motion. All right, Marissa. Christina. Yes. Matt. No. Pete. Can you come Pete. back around to me? Yep. Stephanie. Yes. Jeff. Uh, come back to me. <laughs> Mike. Mike. Yes. Pete. No. Jeff. I, I don't know. I, I really don't want to belabor this project process either, but. Uh, I, I don't know. send it. Go ahead. <laughs> use the use the crap for uh, something down the road. Yes. Or yes to no. Motion passes. Okay. Um, old business item two: school roof project update. Uh, feedback from the visit on May seventeenth between the school building committee and the state of Connecticut. Phil Stevens, you're up. All right, thanks. Um, so the director of the OSIF Office of School Construction Grants and Review, Costa Diamantis, um, he attended a walkthrough at Hall School this past Monday, uh, Monday morning, and, and it was requested by the school building committee. During the walkthrough, uh, he asked about the status of our roofing project applications. Um, and after learning that our projects had state commitment project numbers from his office, he just came out and said, halt your progress. Um, until he has an opportunity to go back and meet with his team at OSCGR staff, he said, stop. Um, Director Diamantis, he thought it was a, a waste of taxpayer dollars, both local and state. Um, to put new roofs on the schools when the town has an active school building committee considering a preschool through grade eight building. Um, he sees OSCGR as the stakeholder here. They are the majority stakeholder. And the reason he sees it that way is because they provide 65% reimbursement to the town of Wellington. So I haven't heard back since uh, since Monday from them. I will be contacting his office again tomorrow, looking for an update. Uh, I don't know what his intention is, but I'm not sure if his intention is to pause the project until the town makes a determination about a pre-K through eighth grade building um, or not. Uh, but the money is good per their approval letter through May, 2023. So, I'm on pause right now. Um, we're trying to keep doing the background legwork to keep this process going, but he's the purse holder and uh, he's the director. His team is the one that does all the legwork. So I wanted to give you a heads up. I emailed the, the Board of Ed today. I told the school building committee last night. Um, I don't know where this is going to land. And he understood that we have leaking roof. So we currently don't have leaking roofs and we haven't had them since. Because um, we did a thousand dollar repair. But I don't think he was interested. And I think his, in, his, his point was, you need to determine if you're going to do, if you're not going to do any school, build, school building project, then you do this. And we had reached out to the Office of School Construction prior, well prior to this, just to make sure we understood the process. And what they told us was, you know, if you did something seven or eight years down the road, the majority of the bond for the school roof project is paid, 
by eight years. Um, and then you would have to pay back whatever was left. It's a 10 year bond. Um, and it's also the reason we didn't look at solar is because that's a 20 year bond. And if something ever happened, you'd pay back a fortune. Um, and so I don't know if he's, he's putting it faster in his head. Um, but I mean, the SPC chair was there. Eric was there at the walkthrough. He was pretty blunt about it. Uh, and I mean, I think his exact words were, stop paying your bills on this until you hear from me. And I remember us having conversations about exactly this. And you came, you checked in some fashion with them previously. You came back with that information about the payoff of the bond because we Correct. were worried about this same thing months ago. Correct. You came back and they told you move ahead. Correct. His, his grant team told me to, to move ahead. Um, I don't know what to tell you. And he may, his, again, I don't know what his intention is. His intention may be to pause until um, the town has an answer. His intention may be just to stop altogether. Uh, I, I, I can't speak to it. All I can tell you is I felt like I was punched in the gut because the amount of work we put into this um, to get to this point and the background information that we gathered exactly like we were supposed to. Um, and here we sit. So you are able to keep working for a little bit longer while you wait for an answer from him? Yeah, so we're right almost at a stopping point because we have all of our architectural plans are in their final phase. Um, and they are currently, uh, I expect the emailed version was already gone out to the building inspector to, um, believe it or not, uh, Eastern Highlands has to approve it. Uh, and to our fire marshal. Our, the actual paper documents I expect will be here tomorrow. Um, the board has to approve them as the building committee as well. But beyond that, we would then be going out to uh, our meeting at the state. It was set for the first week of June. I, we're not gonna have a, a meeting at the state if there's, they're pausing it. So um, we're like as tight as we possibly could be to get this project done this summer. I Other oh, board. Sorry, I'm back someplace. Um, I, I I have two things. One is that uh, I believe when we approved this project, we approved this project deciding that it needed to be done, whether or not we got state or state refunds on it. I believe that was the discussion at the board of finance meeting. That's one thing. The other thing is is. Do I understand from Phil that the building committee asked him to come in and take a, a walkthrough? And what does the building committee for a new school have to do? With, well, I guess they, they, we, they need to know where the old schools are at to make a decision on that. But whether the, the new school building committee should be making decisions on that report after we've already approved the money, I don't know. It wasn't the school building committee making the decision on that. The school building committee invited him in um, because he can come in and look at the buildings and say what he's going to support or not going to support, again, because he's the majority stakeholder. He did the same thing in Mansfield. He's uh, been invited to come out to a school building committee sometime in the next month or so um, for a QA. and uh, I encourage everyone to come in, uh, and attend because... He's, uh, he tells you exactly what he thinks. Um, and he's, again, he's the holder of the first strings. He's, he flat out said to us, I am the majority holder in these, in these projects. No, no, we're the, he's, he's the majority holder yeah. only in that he's, he's paying, paying a, a rebate to us. If we spend the whole thing ourselves, he's a 0% holder on that. And I believe that's what this committee approved. It, it, we, we, we wanted it done whether or not we got that money, I, I, if I remember the conversation correctly. So uh, he may be a 0% stakeholder. Matt? Yeah, you know, this is, this is for the, the people of the town of Willington and the children of the town of Willington, not, not for, for a bureaucrat in Hartford. And he's not, he's not the majority stakeholder, we are. He actually is the majority stakeholder because he pays sixty five percent of the cost. Well, you have we have a different difference of opinion because it, it doesn't serve him; it serves the people of Wellington, and we make the decisions about that, not him. Well, we're just we're we're battling semantics at the moment. Financially, he's the majority stakeholder unless we decide right. not to use the grant. 
So we are the more important people. I agree with you, Matt. Our kids are the more important people. I absolutely agree. But he is the financial majority stakeholder and he's saying, whoa. Yeah. So we have a choice of waiting a few days. Well, at this point, the only thing we need to do is wait a few days to see if there's new information. We have anything, we have anything in writing? So we carry on and pay the freight. What's that, Matt? Do we have anything in writing from this gentleman um, indicating that, that he's holding um, this you know, ransom for, you know, for us to, he's going to hold back after a previous commitment for us to move forward? That's why Phil is waiting for information from his office. We don't have it in writing yet. Correct. Are we going to get it in writing, Phil? That's, That's why I'm, Phil's waiting for information. I'm waiting. Office. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm waiting to see what he's he's going to do. He was going back to meet to, with his team. He, he did the walkthrough on Monday, so I mean, I I'm at his his uh, waiting game right now. Stephanie, um, my question is, what is the typical waiting period for? building committees and projects to actually gain liftoff. And I would think Secretary Diamantis would know that span of years better than anyone, that right. it definitely could outlive the health of a roof, right? I mean, am I missing something? Because I thought that was our plan, that it was not an either or situation that we're facing. We've got old buildings, you know, we're trying to take care of them. If there's like a five-year process and three years of to get spades in the ground, even even if you are building new, um, that's a long time. Are you asking if 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 the town built a new building, what the time frame would be? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would, that's part of it. I'm presuming it's a matter of years, though. I mean, Correct. so his his math. I think that if is he sharing what his thoughts were in an application went in in June of 2022, you'd know by February of 2023 if you got it. Um, and you could put a shovel probably in the ground July 1 of 2023. And I think his statement was you can build a brand new building in two years that size, that was size based upon our enrollment. So he's thinking four years from now, basically. Correct. So has the decision been made that we're going to be building a new school rather than refurbishing no. the other two schools? No. And so you don't need action from us tonight, right, Phil? This, this is, is just an FYI. I mean, uh, you know, we're going to continue along, but um, I'm, I'm letting you know, you know, where, where the, the project is at. Um, it's been moving along and that was a, a quick stop on Monday. Um, and I don't know where it's going to go from here. I really don't. All right. Well, I'd like to say thank you. But that feels funny. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the update, Superintendent Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move along here. Um, Business item three, Willington Fire Department number one, ambulance funding. Um, Erica, I understand this was discussed at the Board of Selectmen's meeting the other night. Uh, before you say what happened there, just a recap for the board members. Back in February, the Board of Finance decided to start a conversation jointly with the Board of Selectmen and with the Town of Union. We asked the Board of Selectmen to make the reach out with us uh, jointly for a conversation. Unfortunately, it didn't go that way. The Board of Selectmen reached out directly to the Town of Union. The Town of Union, we were not included. Um, the Town of Union was not interested in the conversation. That is the last update that I had from Erica. You all got that in email. Um, and then I understand it was discussed at the Selectmen's meeting the other night. So that's my intro to it. Erica, you're on. Sure. So the Board of Selectmen, when we discussed your letter, um, asked me to start the conversation with them. So I did that. Um, there was um, really no support from the first Selectman in Union. Where I left it with him was, I'm going to take this back to the boards that asked me to start this conversation. And I'm sure they'll want to hear back from you. So I didn't leave it as it's done, it's over. Um, I was very clear in 
you may not, you may feel that way. And I started that discussion so that we could set up more meetings and said, I'll take it back to these boards to see what direction you want to take it in. Um, and the board of selectmen on um, Monday night felt that the board of finance um, should reach out and um, incur and, and set a meeting with them since it was the board of finance request. Um, I did not leave it as you're not interested. So we're done with the conversation. It was, I'm gonna take this back to my boards. They're probably going to want to talk about this further um, in a, in potentially in a public meeting. And so I'll leave it to your board to decide which direction you wanna move forward with. So that's an important clarification. And I appreciate that, Erica. Unfortunately, you didn't say that in your email to me. All you said in your email to me was union wasn't interested in the conversation. You didn't say you told them that you were going to bring it back to us. So I'm glad to hear you told them that. I did tell them that. And um, we, I am sure this board will be glad to restart the conversation. Um, I do see Chief Moore raising his hand. So I'll certainly, I'll recognize him since he's involved in this. I just wanted to point out a couple of quick things with it. Um, after your request, we did do some research as to with the, what we actually get from the town of Union. Um, 98% of our calls are highway related. They're not actual town residents of Union. Um, and the revenue that's generated from that is just about 22 to, it's between 22 and 24,000, which is pretty darn close to what that AMILS payment is in Fund 17, off of Fund 17. We've never had a contract with the town of Union. Our agreement is with the state of Connecticut. The town of Union had nothing to do with it. Um, we hold the primary service area for the town of Union. So even if we said, or the board of finance came back and said, we don't want you doing calls there. We're legally obligated, we have to. We hold that PSA. If we give up the PSA, which is pretty hard to do, it's easier now than it was, um, we're still going there by our mutual aid process. We're still going to be going there every time they have a call. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. I, I Chief, I do think that's important information and certainly it'll be part of our conversations going forward. And as we all know, I'm someone with an entire adult life in the fire service. I value that information. Um, what I have explained to you and to this board and I don't plan on backing down from is this board's job is to make prudent use of Willington taxpayers money and Willington taxpayers paying for unions ambulance service is not a prudent use of Willington taxpayer money. So we have to find a solution. Um, comparing the numbers is a great idea. The numbers you get in revenue, we can look at what that means across the cost of running the ambulance. Um, I'm not trying to discredit your information at all. Um, but as I said earlier on, the taxpayers of Willington are carrying somewhere around 70 some percent of the cost of running the ambulance after you do the revenue uh, recovery, after you do the billing. So that right now the taxpayers of the town of Union are not paying anything and they're getting the service. I realize what you're saying that legally, the town of Union isn't responsible for that PSA. Legally, the Willington Fire Department number one is, but essentially what that does, it creates a conundrum. The Willington Fire Department number one has committed the taxpayers of Willington to paying for the town of Union's ambulance service. And so we have to try to find a solution. As I said before, this may be a service we should be providing, but the taxpayers of union right now are getting it for free and we are paying for it. So we have to, we have to figure out how we address that. And maybe we come to the end and address it and, just, and maybe everyone decides what we're doing is right. Um, but we've got, to, we've got to get the numbers down. We got to figure this out. And my inclination is no other town that I know of gets ambulance service for free. They're all paying for it. And right now we're paying for ours and unions. So whatever the legal mechanism is, we need to find a way to figure that out and to, and to get it so that the taxpayers in Willington aren't paying for unions ambulance service. That's my feeling on it. Um, so I look forward to us getting a conversation going. I will, representing the Board of Finance, reach out to the town of Union. I will CC the selectmen. I will certainly in, uh, want input from you, Chief Moore, from what your department is doing. I'd love to go over numbers more and make sure we understand it correctly, that we're not trying to burn down a bridge we don't need to burn down. Um, 
So uh, before we go on to your next item there to be uh, board members, other discussion on this topic, the town of union conversation. Mike, I think you've said exactly how I'm feeling on this matter. I, I, I'm standing behind you 100% on that. I know that because I've had a lot of feedback from board members about this over the last few months. So thank you. Not from me, but I agree with Peter and, and with you, Mike. Um, it's perfectly stated and uh, there has to be a way to reach a solution. So. Any other discussion on this? Okay, let's go to B. Chief Moore, you were gonna give us uh, information back during budget um, allocations and we forgot to ask you at the meeting you came to um, as to what the tower revenue was for the cell phone tower. Yep, so um, currently there's approximately 9,000. So every year we get in the area of $50,000, um, just quick math. So 50,000, 30 of that thousand, 30,000 of that already comes back to the town. Um, off of that tower fund, we pay the cable for um, the main station that does not go through the budget process. We pay our dress uniforms through that. Um, Christmas party or annual meeting expenses as to where that would typically be a budgeted item that the town would pay for. We don't put that through our budget process. We pay for that off of that account. Um, minutes and recordings expenses that were for the emergency services fund or uh, committee have that secretary there that's where the funding or the payment for the secretary was coming from um state of connecticut incorporation fees all of that is done through that tower fund so there's about nine thousand dollars at the end of the year okay so just let me get the numbers right then so there's approximately fifty thousand annual gross revenue from the tower rental correct okay and then what was the 30 you said that the 30 that goes back to the town was ten thousand dollars towards salary i believe right thirty thousand goes back towards salary that the oh, town thirty thousand goes back towards salary i'm sorry yep so there's about twenty thousand remaining and then about eleven thousand of that goes to the things you listed yep and then about nine thousand remains um not every year that's what's in there so over the bill what we usually pay out over the year because we do uh hall school community service awards um, stuff like that. So there's about a $9,000 um, buffer in there. Not a year, but that's what's at the, in the account. Okay. And that changes all the time, depending on, um, you know, we have a change with dress uniforms or we need more, we've had new members come in. We need more uniforms or shirts, stuff like that. We pay for that ourselves. It, okay, it's not, and is that, are those the uniforms also for your ambulance crews or is that- no. No, that is not. That is dress uniforms or we've bought t-shirts and stuff like that. Okay. All right. Um, and then what you said something about a recording secretary. What was when that? When we had the, uh, or when we were doing the emergency service committee, we were paying the recording secretary off of that. The efficiency committee. Okay. The efficiency. Yep, I'm the, right. Okay. I just want to make sure I understood what yep. you were talking about. Yep. Um, the committee that Pete Tanaka is about ready to get going again, right, Pete? No comment. Silent. No, as soon as July 1st rolls around and we can meet in person, I, I would like to get that started as soon as possible, which is why I asked Eric at the begin, very beginning of this what, what the uh, outlook for that was. Uh, I, I am interested in getting that started again. I just, I, I, I just feel a very strong need to have that committee in person. Understood. Um, Chief, and I think at a previous meeting, uh, you also... If I understood right, you also said that the purchase of the vehicle was that from that money, or was that was from? It was not. That that doesn't. The, if there was a large repair on the old vehicle, um, we've had to do, we had to do one or two large repairs on the old vehicle. That did come off of that. Um, okay. But the purchase, the everything else, does not come off that. So you said the purchase of the vehicle came from private funds, and then you're paying it back through salary. It's a it's a loan. It's a loan through the department. So the oh, annual, okay. the regular monthly payments come off of, correct. It's not. Okay. Through. So it wasn't paid for in cash. It was a loan. It was not. Okay. Understood. Okay. I just thought the money, I it was not. That the money would have come from that. Tower. It is not. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Um, other board member questions for Chief Moore?
Okay, looks like we're all set. Thank you for that report, getting us that information. Appreciate it. Okay, that is the end of old business. On to new business. Um, item one, Hall Memorial School fund transfer for CIP project painting front columns. Mr. Stevens. Yes, yeah, so we learned through the roofing project that there's a portion of this uh, job, this, this CIP project that could be done through the roofing project and qualify for reimbursement, um, wherever that stands now. Um, so what I asked Donna was, when does the money run out? Because we were gonna do this uh, prior to the end of this, this fiscal year, um, but it doesn't make sense to do it before the roof project happens because some of this job could happen and would you would be then under budget um, for this, the remainder. So Donna wrote a motion for me and the, the request, the transfer request is to move the $17,800 appropriation for the HMS exterior trim doors and pillars from a capital expenditure account, the 930 to a capital projects account, the 0503, so that the appropriation rolls forward to the new fiscal year. And what that allows is once the roof project is done, whatever's not been taken care of that would have been taken care of through the CIP project will be finished. Okay. Um, I'm happy to make that motion, but I cannot remember it all. <laughs> um, so what was the, uh, the, the from was 930? Yeah, transfer request from uh, 17, move 17,800. Yep. Um, for the HMS uh, CIP project exterior trim. Yep. And it's from 930 to yep. a capital projects account, 0503. Okay, that I can make into a motion now. All right, I move that we transfer $17,800 for the HMS Capital Exterior Trim Project from account 930 to account 0503. Second. Okay, discussion. Yes, if, if we just heard from, from uh, Phil a few minutes ago that we weren't sure whether they would, you know, the roof was gonna be done this and that. If, if this is dependent on the roof being done so we have know what to do on the on the front, should we be transferring money for a project we don't know is going to be happening until next week? This keeps the money available. All it does is allows us to cross. All it does is keep it available. It just, it just allows us to cross July 1st. That's it. Thank you. That update, I, 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 the clarification. Sorry if I wasn't clear. Other discussion? Well, this Go ahead. one more clarification. Will this prevent us from doing the, the, the front if the roof doesn't get done because it's part of the motion? No. No, it's just moving it to a different account that doesn't lapse. All right. We've done this before with other projects that ended up crossing over July yeah. 1. Matt, go ahead. This was approved last year, wasn't it? It's in the yeah. current school year. How come it didn't get done? Because there were, well, I'll let you answer that, Mr. Stevens. It, it depends on when we schedule the work. We were going to do the work on April vacation and decide to, to wait. And we were going to do it prior to the summer. And really, it's I've pushed to have this done for the 100th anniversary of the building. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not been done yet. So what they said was, if you can get some of this money uh, reimbursed, it's it's a benefit to you, and it that's what the 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 method we've taken right now. <clears throat> Got a lot to do this summer. Is the actual just to, just a for uh, aside? Is the actual date of the building still? Uh, it, it just seems like it keeps changing. Nineteen twenty-two. Correct. <laughs> No, 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 no. The, the, the date that Tall School was built, this is, you know, a whole 100th anniversary thing. 1922. Mm -hmm. It is 22? Correct. Because the book says it was dedicated in 23, so that's, you know. But then 10 years ago, people were talking about the 100th anniversary. They were way off. 
Just, I'm a stickler for history, players. that's all. I just want to make sure that this all, you know. The dedications are often beyond the, the, the moment of build, right? Yeah, when all the politics- yeah, We gotta get a party planned, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Okay, any more discussion? Marissa, let's vote. The motion is to transfer 17,800 to from 9.30 to 05.03. Christina. Yes. Pete. Yes. Matt. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Mike. Yes. Six yeses, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, next item, new business item two, revenue collector suspense list. And um, I think I can screen share it here. Stand by. Um, Janice, if you want to just kind of do your preamble while I'm doing the screen share here, feel free. Sure. So we're looking at the annual suspense list that we have to file every year. Um, I have bills dating back to 16, you know, 2019 to 2016 grand list. Grand total this year, we're looking at $22,141.36. The uh, 2019 uh, bills that we're looking at, the grand list bills, uh, majority comes from uh, Cato Rock, the contaminated properties that are currently unsellable, but hopefully the town will take ownership come uh, November. Uh, motor vehicle, uh, I believe this person has uh, deceased, so therefore uh, there's nothing in there, um, nothing available right now through probate to get that paid off. Um, the 2018, um, 17 is a bit more than I expected. 18 is the year that the assessor started putting student vehicles on the list if they were from out of state and uh, had a rental at any of the Willington uh, apartment buildings, they're subject to Connecticut tax. So a lot of them international students with high-end vehicles that I don't think they really understand they have to pay a tax. They either leave the state, they go back to their country of origin and you know just sell the car to another person. So that leaves a quite a bit of motor vehicle uh, taxes unpaid. But that's our grand total for this year. And I know your answer to this, but I'm gonna ask you anyway, you've made all reasonable efforts to collect, correct? Oh yes, yep. Through collection, we have a new collection agency that's working out really, really well. They're able, they've been able to collect quite a bit going back to 2005 actually. But um, yeah, the, 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 a lot of these people, we just can't find them. Is this um, um, a normal year or is this high, low? Is it trending in a specific direction? Or? This is higher than last year. I did take a look. We were a little over 12,000 last year. But again, I'm finding a lot of the vehicles that we're unable to collect on Maseratis, Porsches, you know, Mercedes, just a lot of your high-end vehicles. And then, you know, people disappear, don't renew registrations. Um, so, the rich but, folks, so the rich folks aren't paying their taxes, huh? I'm sorry? The joke. The rich folks oh, I did. <laughs> aren't paying their taxes, I guess, yeah. Okay. So, so this is um, this is an interesting result of an aggressive assessor. We're we're reaching into areas that maybe we weren't pursuing as well before, but that also, that also brings us more risk in those right. areas not collecting. But right. The positive side is we weren't collecting in those areas maybe in the past. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion that we accept the suspense list from the tax collector as presented. Second. Discussion? Marissa, can we vote? Matt. 
Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Jeff. Yeah. Christina. Yes. Pete. Yes. Mike. Yes. Six yes, motion passes. Okay, last item of new business. Uh, financial shortfall notice from Wellington Fire Department number one. Uh, you all received it. Do you wanna give a quick, quick review? I'm sorry, Mike, I, was that for me? Uh, yes, would you like to give a quick review of your sure. uh, the letter with the shortfall request? Yep, um, so last year when we presented our budget, we had initially had um, an increase in that budget as well because of vehicle, the trend upwards in vehicle maintenance. Um, this year we saw it. Um, as I said in my letter to the Board of Finance, the ambulance alone um, repairs as of the end of April was over $16,000. Um, and then unexpected repairs at the South Station down in um, the village um, caused our building maintenance to be substantially higher than what it was, um, which has caused us a lot of projects that we have not been able to do this year um, that have to get done. Otherwise, we're already starting well in the hole um, for next fiscal year. Um, Mike, in your response, you had asked regarding the insurance on the South Station. Right, on the septic overflow. Yep, so the insurance did pay a portion, um, but unfortunately when they opened the walls, um, there was a lot of mold that they considered to be pre-existing that had to be removed, um, which meant moving, removing a lot more of the sheetrock than what was anticipated. Um, cabinets, everything else had to, pretty much the entire living space of that building was gutted um, and had to be re-put back in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that's what there was in a cost. The, the insurance company was not going to cover um, the increase because of the mold because they considered that pre-existing. Okay, so is the 8807, is that after the insurance? That is after the insurance. Okay, so that's what affected your budget because Cor insurance, that's the portion the insurance did not cover. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Correct. And I think I also asked if you could comment if you thought anything in this was uh, applicable to COVID, like housing, like the fact that you had to keep firefighters at that station. So I, yes. So the the issue with the septic system was because of greater use of the of the system. Um, we had never staffed that building, or we haven't staffed that building in years with actually people staying there. Um, right. So there was a larger influx of stuff going into the tank that um, we did not know there was roots going across the line. Um, and even with getting the septic tank drained, they would never have seen it because of where it was. Um, and that caused the backup into the station. So it caused a, a large backup into the station. Okay, so um, because you were using the building a lot more because of COVID um, and because you needed that building to keep your people separated for COVID yep. reasons. Do we yep. have any idea that there could be any COVID funds applied to this? That I don't know. Erica, you have any thoughts on that? That's a tricky one. Um, and so that's one, um, this advisory committee, I'd run something like that past them. I, 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 my initial thought is no, because all that did was bring to light a potential neglect on our end of the facility. Um, it, it's how they could see it. So it's possible, Mike, I won't rule it out. And we'll, we can add things like that to our list of questions when you know we start saying, hey, what do you think about this? <laughs> what do you think about this one? Uh, and unfortunately with the mold, we had no idea until things started getting open up. Okay. And sure. Yeah. It's possible. Okay, it's other board members, questions for Chief Moore? Uh, so is the total, Alex, what's the total impact? Um, 13,670 is what we need to at least get these projects done. Um, and some of them, personal protective gear, the replacement of the Hearst tool, um, lines, um, tires, the foam stuff, uh, that is all stuff that we, we need to do. Um, and we really can't hold that off till next fiscal year. Cause we're just going to start ourselves in a really big hole after coming, you know, our budget's already shorter than what we had predicted for next year. So this will just cripple us if we wait till next year. So procedurally, 
I don't believe we can add 13,670 to your budget without going to town meeting. Is that correct, Erica? That is correct. We can add up to $10,000 to their budget without going to town meeting. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. And I just for uh, clarification, I think there's a better chance of getting COVID money for the things he needs to buy than the remediation of the building. Okay. So if we were to make an allocation, then we could look later to possibly getting that recouped through the COVID money. Yes. Okay. For the sake of discussion, I move that we add $10,000 to the Wellington Fire Department number one budget for fiscal 21. Mike, Mike before you make that motion, I, I heard a couple of different uh, items there. Uh, one was uh, septic, one was remediation, one was replacing hoses. If we do those in three separate uh, deals the, the septic part was do it that way, or is that is that just uh, two steps too sleazy? No, if we break them up in one meeting, we're violating the um, we're still violating that we can't add more than ten thousand dollars without going to the taxpayers. Thank you. Otherwise, otherwise we would have a lot of flexibility. We could. We can make 10,000 uh, motions to add. It, it, it's a thought after sitting here for two hours, that's all. Mm. Uh, can I get a second on the motion for discussion? Second. Okay, discussion on the motion. What did you say about hoses that was more expensive this year? Uh, we have to replace the Hearst tool hoses. That, that was a planned maintenance item. Um, they won't pass the, every year we have to have it inspected. Okay. Um, we have, to, it's one of the things that they, a critical thing that they said we have to have replaced. And be, we just don't have it because of the repairs. In our, in our 21-22 uh, budget, is the, are the, amb, the potential for ambulance repairs reflected more accurately than? They were, but because of the reduction, they won't be. We had a reduction in our budget, so those costs are, the repairs are where it's going to come out of. Um, I unfortunately don't, the operating expenses are the operating expenses. The repairs are the only things that, it's a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion on the motion? Um, Chief, I... Uh, not that it necessarily closes the door on this request or this topic, but I'm hoping that at least within what's within our power to do at a meeting that $10,000 will set you square enough for now. That, that's a lot better than where we are right now. Truth. Any more discussion? Marissa? The motion is to add $10,000 to the Willington Hill Fire Department budget. For... Willington Fire Department number one. Sorry. I wrote it wrong. Wellington Fire Department number one for fiscal year 21. Pete. Uh, yes. Matt. Yes. Christina. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Mike. Yes. Six yes, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Okay, correspondence. Um, you all have anything that I have. Erica, go ahead. You're muted. I think you, I'm not sure if you voted to add it to the agenda. You added the oil Ooh. tank discussion. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. It's written up at the top of the page and I'm now at the bottom of the page. I wrote it at the bottom. Oh, that's good thinking. <laughs> Um, okay, um, I move that we add an agenda item, new business item four for Stuart Cobb's request to discuss CIP re the oil tank at Wellington Fire Department number one. Second on the motion to add to the agenda. 
Second. Okay. Um, Marissa, can you call the vote? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Christina? Yes. Matt? Yes. Pete? Yes. Jeff? Do you want to just discuss it or do you actually want money? This is just to put it on the agenda so we can yes. ask that question. Mike? Yes. Six yeses, motion passes. Okay, Stuart. This is a planned CIP project in the current fiscal year. Uh, I believe the funding amount was $50,000 that was in CIP. It was planned to use LOSIP money to fund this project. And as Donna has explained to me, uh, this requires uh, Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance and town meeting approval to make this move forward. Uh, we were waiting for the end of the heating season to uh, do this, so um, now is the time. Okay. Do you have the language we need for a motion? Erica might know that better than I do. Does the Board of Finance refer back to the Board of Selectmen to call the town meeting or add it to a town meeting agenda? Yes, they need to. Uh, they would move to um, recommend the Board of Selectmen call a town meeting. Okay. Um, do you have the, they're, they're low, the money's coming from LOSAP. I don't have a draft motion. I did not prepare one. I did not. I wasn't asked to, so I apologize. I believe the money's already approved in this current fiscal year. It's not like we're asking for another 50,000. Right. It's already set aside, ready to go. It's simply getting it to town meeting. So the uh, whoever votes on it there will make the appropriate motion to open up that money for us. Correct, but the motion here is what gets put on the town. That's correct, yes. On the call the town meeting. So the wording of it really matters. So give me just a minute and I'll see what I can. Are you do. looking up a previous one? You betcha. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I was going to try to do that, but. I won't stop you from trying, but I'll go at the same time. Um, All right. So in the meantime, um, well, I can't really change agenda items. I already commented that you have your correspondence. I can't go further than that right now while we're in business, so. Should I play the Jeopardy music? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I changed my mind now. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering who was going to be the first one. <laughs> All right, so uh, tried this one on for size. Um, authorize the Board of Selectmen call a town meeting to appropriate. Uh, appropriate $50,000 from Capital Projects Fund LOSIP for the Willington Fire Department number one underground tank replacement to be reimbursed by the State of Connecticut Local Capital Improvement Program. Stand by, I'm making notes. Marissa, did you get all that? Yep. <laughs> and that's why she's the secretary. <laughs> Indeed. That's right, Marissa. Mm. Uh, to be refunded by LOSAP? Re uh, reimbursed. reimbursed. Uh, Sorry, I lost it here. All right, let me try this. I move that the Board of Finance authorize the Board of Selectmen to call a town meeting to appropriate $50,000 for capital project LOSIP underground tank replacement at Willington Fire Department number one to be reimbursed by LOSIP. Sure, second. Okay, are we okay with that? Okay, discussion. Yeah, I just have a question. Um, it doesn't, 
it's not impacting on how we'll vote or anything like that, but I know we replaced another oil tank and we made it above ground. So the, we did look at the above ground aspect of things and the costs were between a hundred and hundred and ten thousand dollars to do that. We looked at the uh, replacing the in-ground oil tank. It was a similar amount of money, over a hundred thousand dollars. What the funding is for is to remove the 2,000 gallon underground oil tank and replace it with two more, a total of three, 1,000 gallon propane tanks with a propane burner adapter in our present furnace. So we get rid of the underground oil tank and we save over $50,000. Thank you. Why do you have to take a tank out if you're not gonna use it? It's 20 years old, uh, DEP regulations and common sense says you don't leave tanks in place. You can abandon them in place, uh, but you have to cut them open and fill them with, suck out everything, clean them and fill them with sand or similar material. Um, so, and the cost of removing the tank is uh, under 10,000. Um, so that, that was a somewhat, you know, minor cost involved, but you don't want that liability sitting on your property. Uh, on top of that, our insurance companies adjust their policies over the year, years that uh, if you have an underground oil tank that leaks, they do not cover any of uh, that. So we wanna get it out, out of there. Um, the, the example would be the state DOT garage, the old one, they had a gasoline tank in there for 28 years. It sprung a leak, dumps thousands of gallons of uh, gasoline in the ground. They end up having to buy a house because the well was polluted um, and put other mitigation members, uh, measures in. Uh, it's time for that oil tank to go. Okay, any more discussion? Let's vote. Christina. Yes. Matt. Uh, can you come back to me? Yep, Pete. Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Jeff? Yes, even though I think it's stupid, but yes. Mike? Yes. Pete? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Matt? Yes. Okay. Six yeses. Motion passes. Erica, thank you for reminding me about that item. Okay. You're welcome. This way we can add it to the town meeting we're about to call. There you go. Um, present to speak, our second round. If anyone's out there who would like to speak, if you're in video, please turn on your camera and wave. Um, and let's make sure I got the whole screen of everybody here. Okay, I do. Um, Erica? Um, I just wanna thank the board um, and um, all of the participants in the budget process. Once again, we found ourselves in an atypical year with a lot of hold and wait, please. Um, and I just wanna thank you for um, your understanding and um, just hanging in there with us. So I, I appreciate all the work that you do and this just adds um, to that for sure. Thank you for that. Um, Ralph Toulis, I see your little blue hand up. Would you like to speak? Oh, very good. It works. I wasn't sure if it did. It does indeed. I, I want to go back to uh, Jeff's comment a little bit earlier about uh, Hall School. Uh, I've got a couple history books in front of me about Wellington. Uh, in 1923, Hall School was completed. And then um, September 7th of 1923, they had dedication exercises for Hall Memorial School in South Wellington. It was at the time it was called the model school consisted of four classrooms an auditorium and a well equipped gym. Uh, just for some of us history buffs I just thought i'd share that with everyone. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. I see that I was right. You were right I didn't think you were that old Jeff. <laughs> the funny yeah, thing is, Jeff you, you were right reference. and you still sound exasperated and unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> But as you said in email the other day, you're never going to change, right? <laughs> Speaking of which, somebody could have responded to that. You know, it would have been nice. Anyway. I responded to that. Yeah. I didn't respond to your comment, but I responded to the 
the action. Okay, who else, <laughs> Christina? I just, I just wanted to add to Ralph's history lesson that I think the confusion came up because there was a smaller hall school that predated the hall school we have now, or maybe it was the Willington school, but there was, um, that's why there was confusion 10 years ago because there was something there before. I, I believe the stone on the outside of the building says 1922, which maybe that was when they set the cornerstone. Exactly. There you go. So there's all sorts of information, all sorts of options. <laughs> okay, anyone else in present to speak? If you are on not providing video, you can do what Ralph did and raise your little blue hand or you can unmute and call your name out. Okay, moving on. Good and welfare. Um, thank you all again. We've been in this long process. It seems like this budget process has just been two straight years. Um, and I hope everyone is uh, healthy and enjoying some of our new freedoms and um, taking them uh, with care, but uh, reverence. Anybody else? Yeah, if we're still on history, um, the uh, 300th anniversary of the town is five and a half years away. Yes. Yes. So start paying attention. Stephanie. Um, yeah. Um, so I can't believe it's been a whole year, but um, Saturday is the first anniversary of, of the death of Ted Demers in the murder in Wellington. And I just thought we might want to be aware of it and uh, give our, uh, our best thoughts to um, Cindy. And um, I, w I wrote a remembrance about him because uh, our paths had crossed a few times that was published. And one of the things I said about him is he was the kind of guy who harbors a small town soul. And I think um, that made him perfect for Wellington. Mm. Thank you for that. Can I share, Mike, there will be a, a similar candlelight vigil on the green, um, the undertaking of the same individuals who did this last year, but it will be next weekend um, so that the family was able to um, have their time this weekend, but next, I believe it's next Saturday with a rain date next Sunday. So you can leave a candle um, on the green and then come pick it up the next day. That was a very powerful moment when I saw that. So I recommend anyone uh, who has an opportunity to see that, especially after dark, do it. Thanks, Erica. You're welcome. Yes, thank you for that. Okay, anyone else on Good and Welfare? Pete Tanaka, I believe you're queued up. I am, and uh, I'd just like to remind you, Mike, that they're old freedoms, not new freedoms, and uh, we're, we're, they're being returned to us by a benevolent government. Uh, some of us are just taking them back, and I'd like to move. We sure. <laughs> well done. Well moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjournment, say goodnight and wave goodbye. Good night. Aye. Bye. Bye. Aye. <laughs> that seems unanimous. Okay. Marissa, you all set? Yep. Hey, Thank good night, you. Everyone.